Here with Washington State women's basketball head coach Cami Etheridge. Coach, your team picks up a 66-52 victory over the rival Huskies in the second game of the Boeing Apple Cup Series this afternoon. Uh, just opening comments, and we'll open the floor for questions. You know, just super happy for this team. Um, I've kind of been rubbing it in their faces so much of being 0-3, and, and, and I'm sure I've been brutal in, in practice trying to continue to make this team uh, handle adversity a little bit better than we did this past weekend. And, and just the magnitude, I think, of, of how much better I still think our team can get. Um, I, I just think this week was a big step for us, and we, we responded great um, after that loss with Colorado and um, obviously had a good scout um, going into UW. Again, someone that beat us a month ago, and again, we've lost a couple of games. So um, it was a big statement game for us, and I just liked our response, and I liked how we came out of out plan and uh, the defensive end was pretty pretty awesome the entire game um offensively still we're we're a work in progress and i think we can get better there open the floor for questions please state your name and your organization and ask your question jamie vinnick uh, kookfan.com coach uh you get charlise back after a couple games off and maybe a slow start and then she goes for 22 in the second half is as a coach is that just kind of a relief when you can say all right it's charlise is in that zone just give her the ball and let her go well, again, I, I was um, – yes, yes. I mean, I, I would like her to have 22 every quarter, every half. But, um, you know, she only practiced with us once. <clears throat> and I did think she kind of – I'm sure she practiced and shot and tried to do some things while she was home because they have access to a gym every – maybe not every day, but uh, there's no question she got in the gym and shot some. But even in practice yesterday, I felt like the speed of the game – you know, it's just hard to mimic that when you're on your own and you don't have that competition. So I thought she missed some shots yesterday, just a little rusty and not so much threes and, and some of those shots, standstill shots. She, she, was, she was making a she's, – she's been really good since she's gotten back. But I, So I wasn't sure how it would play out today. I didn't know, if, again, the speed of this game, having to make decisions. Clearly it may have taken her a minute to, to kind of get a little bit more aggressive offensively. Uh, but again, her, the hard twos that she makes is, you know, kind of otherworldly. Not very many players out there that can make those kinds of shots consistently and, again, shoot a great percentage. So um, I think it's a good sign for us just to get her in that zone and, and clearly her shooting the three as well as she she is. So you have to guard that. It's a, it's a really good sign that, that we're going to – I think consistently she can put up these kinds of numbers. You know, when the lineup came out uh, originally, Bella wasn't starting, and then uh, AT goes down and warm-ups. Bella kind of gets inserted, goes for 20, is a huge part of that first half with Ula. Just kind of talk about that, kind of maybe from the start of the mindset to, to give AT that start, and then Bella kind of stepping in and just doing what Bella is capable of. Well, I, honestly, I, I just haven't felt completely uh, great about Bella's practicing and some of her practicing and, and – um, and it just came down to that. When, knowing that when uh, Charlize was coming back, I just was like, I'm not taking AT out of the lineup. And, and you, now, I, mentioned, I said that to Bella yesterday. It happened yesterday in practice. I just walked into practice and I'm like, you know, starters are going to be this. The response by Bella yesterday in practice was unbelievable. And she was as good as she's been in practice. So everything about her response to it, it wasn't hangdog. It wasn't that's not fair. There was no nothing other than she had a great practice and she was a great teammate. So her response was everything I wanted it to be. I'm not trying to punish her. I, the, the standard is the standard. You hear it all the time. And everybody needs to play at that level and compete at that level and uh, not want calls or, you know, breaks or – you know, you just can't feel sorry for yourself, especially when you're 0-3. So I really liked our team's response to everything we put at them this week. And uh, she, Bella came, came ready to play yesterday at practice, and she obviously got herself focused. And she knew she wasn't going to start, and then all of a sudden does. And she was, I think, had the first eight points for us. I mean, she was so good. And clearly, that's the Bella, that's the post presence that we need. And, um, and again, I think the message is, that's how hard you have to practice, and you just hope that it translates to game. But you can't, and that's for our whole team. We were much more physical this week in our practicing. We, were, we played a lot more. We demanded a lot more. And the entire team, uh, I think, made way 
a lot of progress. And again, this was mostly without without Charlie. So I was really happy with the entire team and how we responded this week and, and how we came out ready to play today. Thanks, Coach. Hi, Coach. Taryn Kovach, Whitman County Gazette. Um, I just wanted to expound on a comment you made earlier. Uh, you said that you saw some offensive themes that you guys still need to improve on. But, you know, looking at the just the stat book, almost doubled their point total just in the paint and had a you know, a decent showing uh, shooting the ball as well. So I was just wondering if you could expound on some of the things that you saw that offensively you guys could improve of. I mean, it's just the one column, turnover column. I just think that's the one that we just – there were just so – there were a couple of turnover that you just shook your head and thought, instead of being up 12, we should be up 14. That was just – and why did we choose to do that? And, and what – you know, going, maybe going for the home run. I mean, you're going to have some of those mistakes. I just thought there was probably seven that we just flat out a little bit uncharacteristic, trying to get too much, trying to be a little bit too fancy. And, you know, and those are the ones you just got to <clears throat> eliminate because you're going to have some turnovers. You're going to make some bad decisions, and you can't help that. But, you know, when it's kind of self-imposed, um, we had a plan on how to, to attack uh, and get the ball inside, and all of a sudden we got real – you know, infatuated with just pocket passes that our post couldn't handle. So there was a boatload of those and then some in individual decision making. So I thought our defense was as good as it could get. And then I thought, gosh, we should be up on these guys more than we are, but for that turnover column. So again, I think that's the thing is decision making is this game. You, you have to learn how to do it in a split second based on what they do to you. And, and, and that's the hard part to coach. And um, certainly it's a hard part to duplicate and be consistent with as a player. So we got to keep putting our kids in those positions and, and hope they continue to grow and get better. And you guys did take a lot of shots in the paint, but you know had a pretty minimal trips to the free throw line. I was just wondering if you could possibly explain you know, <laughs> any adjustments, if any, that you guys have to make you know, when it's, you are going into the post like that, are taking that many shots, but maybe not getting all the calls you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've just – it's I'm old as dirt and I just need to not be bothered by the officials at all you I thought they were consistently let us play they really did that at UW too and that bothered us you know I, I thought we we didn't handle that well uh once you get into pack I think the game has it seems to be much much more physical than it was in non-conference um and it's for both sides um clearly we'd like to get to the line a little bit more um and and they try hard to score in the paint, so I I totally understand how they got they got to the line a little bit more than us. But overall, I was really happy with how we defended the paint, and the fact that we scored that many points in the paint, I think, is incredible for us. And again, something we can we gotta we gotta have every game, and then I think our outside game will even get better as we go. Thank you, coach. Uh, you spoke to kind of the, the mental side of the game and how uh, the team wasn't as competitive against Colorado versus this week kind of a raised level of competitiveness. How do you sustain that and help your team sustain that over the course of the season? Well, I think it was interesting. I, I, Lynn, uh, off of U Utah, just the, the level of play in the second half where we competed so well against Utah and stepped up and played without our best player when we probably could have gotten down 30. You know, you're down 18, and it could have snowballed, and everybody could have just tanked it. And we didn't, and I think that emotion of that and thinking that we could play that level easy again and, and duplicate that without Charlize. And then I I thought we would come with emotion and passion and all of that, and then we got into the Colorado game and we just didn't have it. I just didn't think we had it in a lot of positions on the floor, and I just felt like we were really, really flat. <clears throat> and, again, it could be the letdown. It could be that's the game that really affected us without Charlize helping save the day like she does a lot <clears throat> and uh and then obviously we have all week to prepare for this game and there was just not going to be you know we probably knew Charlize was going to get back not much for practice but be back but the intent was I don't care if Charlize is here or not we need to be a better basketball team when she gets back and that's on everybody to improve their play and when she gets back on the court, clearly we'll be a better basketball team with her on it. But we can also be – everyone around her can be better. And that's the goal um, of this week and then moving forward so that we don't have to depend on her, you know, just moving mountains every night.
Would you say that renewed focus helps you start the game really fast? Yeah, I do. I mean, the intent was to run first post down, be a post presence, and screen them. Again, we watched the film. We didn't screen them very well. Everybody else screens us so well and gets easy baskets against us in these last two games. They screened us, and, and so that was the intent all week, and I thought we really got better and, and had – you know, focus on that job and not, again, we say it all the time, that's a whiff. You just whiffed on that. So we got to eliminate those because I do think with our guard play and with our ability in the post, we can we can create some easy baskets and advantages off of screening if we are a little bit more committed to it. So I thought we started the game great um, and, you know, had moments where we lost our minds a little bit and had some bad habits come back up. But that's the stuff I think we can continue to get better at. Awesome. And um, I don't know if there's a lot of information yet, but what exactly happened with A.T.? Um, yeah, I don't know, other than I think she was passing the ball and came down on a kid. You know, we I guess it's a stupid drill to be doing at the start of that in our last thing in warm-up that we could actually hurt our teammate. But she just landed off of a pass and rolled her ankle pretty hard. And I think it's it's not – not an easy one. I think it's going to be a few days, and we got to really work to try to get her back and as soon as we possibly can back in the lineup. And then I guess who is uh, – what, what were kind of the uh, underrated performances that you saw today? Anybody stand out? Well, I love Keir Gardner's response, like uh, giving her a chance. Um, I, I, I liked her for the most part. I thought she lost a couple of rebounds. She gave up a three that we in a crucial time when I think they'd cut it to six or eight or seven or something and then she gave up a three and then the very next uh she got a wide open three and made it so i think she missed a layup on a play gave up a three and what a time and then came back down and made a three i mean that for a freshman to probably have a couple of mishaps and mess ups and then that kind of response and honestly we're seeing that a lot in her the more we you know the she's not afraid of the moment she has some confidence um and, you know, showing that she can get over a mistake and move on is, is, you know, a lot of freshmen can't do that. So it gives me a lot of confidence to put her back in in those situations. And, again, I think her game and her potential can really – she can be another answer for us as we move forward. I thought Grace gave us great minutes in, in defending in particular and getting us in the stuff that we wanted. I thought Jessica Clark, she's spelling us a little bit and coming back. You know, she has the ability to make some shots from the perimeter. I thought I liked – weren't. I don't think there was anyone that I didn't like. I didn't give Yo as many minutes, but, you know, that's going to happen some with her, again, as we try to manage her, her injury. Thank you, Coach. All right, Coach, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on the win against the Huskies. We'll talk to you next week before the trip to Oregon. Until then, go Cougs. Thank you. Go Cougs. Thanks for the fans. Awesome group, and it feels good to be back on the winning side. Go Cougs.